Are you tired of being plain old ordinary black? Wish you could wear ethnic paraphernalia like a kiss me I'm Irish button or a legitimate feathered headdress not associated with a music festival? When people ask you where you're really from, do you wish you could say more than, oh, you know, a slave ship? Well, have I got a product for you. Just fill this container with your spit or blood or tears or whatever, then sign away your cloning rights and ability to process gluten. Send it to us and voila, we'll tell you what you really are. I'm 2% a Jewish. And 100% more interesting. DNA testing for genetic ancestry is one of the fastest growing consumer markets. The industry more than doubled in 2017, and it's now estimated that well over 26 million people have access to their DNA profiles. Most people who have tested are in the US, and most of those people are white, black, and mixed race Americans whose ancestors go back at least three generations here. That's right. People of this great melting pot of a country want to know what melted, how much melted, and where the stuff that melted came from. Ew. Today, we're gonna look at the positives and negatives of these tests for black Americans. Black folks have deep roots in the US, obviously. The importation of slaves was banned in 1808, so most of us have been here for well over 200 years. But we're the least likely to know our ancestral past because of slavery. It's not fair. We deserve to know what's in our hot, bubbly, melting pot goo just like everyone else. So how does all of this really work? I don't know, I'm not a scientist. I was rhetorical, I mean, we got Joe. When you send your DNA off to one of those personal genomics or ancestry companies, they don't read all six billion letters of your DNA. They only have to read a few hundred or thousand spots. What they get is a kind of barcode that describes your unique combination of DNA letters at these spots, because who wouldn't want their entire identity summarized by a barcode? Then they compare your unique barcode with thousands of reference individuals from different geographical areas to see what you share and what you don't. They sprinkle a little math on it, and then they send you their best guess of where your DNA comes from. Well, that sounds pretty cut and dry, right? It's just like a DNA matching game. Wow, Evelyn, I never expected you of all people to be so naive. Excuse me? There's one major problem that Evelyn fails to foresee. The genetic databases that these companies use to play the DNA matching game have major gaps, major non-white gaps. Nearly 80% of people who have participated in studies about genes are of European descent. Right, gotcha. That means that analyzing the data of Africans, Middle Easterners, Asians, and indigenous Americans is pretty difficult, and especially difficult if you're a mixture, because many DNA segments are shared among groups. So why don't they just go to those places and get more of the DNA? <clears throat> Hello there. <laughs> Jombo. Yes, Jombo. <laughs> um, would you ladies be willing to spit in this cup for a research project we're doing in America? What are you talking about? We already know about Jesus. Oh, no, this isn't anything <laughs> religious. This is for science. Science, oh gee, how do I explain this? Uh, it's like you look up at the sky and you think, hmm, why is it blue? And so you decide to experiment. We know what science is. How do you think we can keep our fish out in this hot sun and it doesn't spoil? We use science. I understand if spitting is unattractive, we could use some of your hair or blood. Let me ask you something. Let's say we go to where you're from, I'm going to say, New Jersey. Mm. Oh, yes, well, I am from Jersey. I can tell. So we go to your home and we say, hey, lady, give us some of your blood and your sweat and your tears and your spit for a project we are working on in Africa. How would that make you feel? Well, I know you Americans don't do nothing for free. You're getting rich from this spit? <laughs> rich, me? <laughs> I can hardly keep up with my student loans. <laughs> We all must do our part for science. Mm. Science. Is science gonna raise my kids? No. Is science gonna keep my man from getting on my nerves? Mm -mm. Is science going to end the negative impact of Western imperialism on my society? No, no, no. Ladies, if you don't want no rice or no fish, then you can take your speed cup and go back to Jersey. I am pretty hungry. 
I don't think I've eaten all day. We'll we'll take some of your fish and rice. Okay, oh, come sit. Okay, sit, sit, come sit. sit. We'll talk about this DNA science. Sure, sure. That went surprisingly well at the end, all because of a little thing called reciprocity. In February of 2017, a consortium of African scientists called the H3 Africa Initiative released ethical guidelines for foreign researchers. So good. Now scientists have to evaluate how their work directly benefits the African community they're studying. Yes, and that includes economic benefits. Which gets into another issue with these tests, how the companies make money off of your genetic data. I mean, well, you pay for the service. Yeah, but then forever and into eternity, they can sell your genetic data to third parties like research firms and drug companies. Most of them let you opt out, but some don't. I don't know, as a black person? That makes me uncomfortable. Like, what about what they did to Henrietta Lacks? Her cancer cells are still the most important cells in medical research. They are saving lives to this day, and neither her nor her family ever received any compensation. That is so terrible. Well, these tests only take a little spit, which, unlike blood or cancer cells, isn't really enough to do anything with, but sequence and store the data in a database. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's a little better. Yeah, but I hear you. What if they get hacked and everyone finds out I have restless leg syndrome and I'm allergic to carrots? Well, everyone knows now, so. It's definitely something I thought about when I did my DNA testing. Wait, you've taken the test? Yeah, I've done like five. What? First of all, too many. But AZ, we're doing a whole episode about DNA testing and you didn't think to tell us you've had like five? I forgot. Oh my God, I can't. Okay, well. Let's take a look at my results. So as you can see, each company has gotten different results based on what is in their database and how their algorithm analyzes my DNA barcode. Okay, but like some of these are way different. Like that one has only like three places on it. Oh, hey Kenya. But that one has basically everywhere on it. Also Kenya. Hey cuz. <laughs> Yeah, the discrepancies between these maps is nuts. But when you think about it, a lot of ethnicities share a large portion of DNA because of shared history and, you know, people getting it on and stuff. So if a company doesn't have enough non-white DNA, they won't be able to distinguish well between non-white ethnicities. When they analyze the DNA, they put it through the algorithm many dozens of times and then average the results. So the 17% that I share with them is an average. Look, I might share 0% or as much as 33%. Okay, so those are countries now, but there are a lot of ethnicities there, like the Ashanti, the Akan, Songhai, Hausa. Ancestry.com explains that national lines are pretty arbitrary. This region has about 60 different ethnic groups that share DNA. That doesn't exactly inspire confidence. I know, but the opposite is the case for Benin, Togo, because my range for that was not wide at all, 28 to 30%. Whoa, okay, well, I mean, I've heard about a company that specializes in African DNA. Yes, called African Ancestry. And they have the world's largest database of African DNA, and they can determine your lineage down to one exact country and ethnic group. They can, it's deep ancestry. Come again, nerd? Don't ask me, ask Joe. Do you remember from biology class how your DNA is all inside something called the nucleus? Ah, uh, yeah! Uh, well, that actually wasn't quite accurate. There's a little bit of DNA inside a part of the cell called the mitochondria. Now, way back in deep time, these mitochondria used to be free-swimming creatures, but they got swallowed by a bigger cell, and now they live inside all of our cells. These things have their own genetic material, and unlike your other 46 chromosomes, there's no shuffling when it's passed between generations. And what's more, all of your mitochondria came from your mother's egg, not your father's sperm. So we can look at that DNA to trace an unbroken line of ancestors stretching back through every female in your family tree. Now, tiny changes in this DNA also let us track how human populations have migrated, for most people at least. Well, the most ancient mitochondrial DNA in humans comes from Africa, where our species originated. And we can even trace it back to one woman about 150,000 years ago. Scientists call her Mitochondrial Eve. Now, she wasn't the only Homo sapiens female alive then, but only her lineage lives on today. So I guess that means we're all basically related, right? Yeah, we're gonna get there, Joe. One day, one day. Right.
So by analyzing mutations in your mitochondrial DNA, African Ancestry can pinpoint the exact place and ethnic group of your maternal line. Great. So have you taken that test? No, I can't, and I'll show you why. So my ancestry starts here, just like everyone else's, East Africa. Then we're itching to migrate. Bye, Mom. We got to see the world. First, my people went north to Egypt. Someone should build some pyramids here, right? They were not into building pyramids, I guess. So they went to Turkey. Ooh, I love these Caucasus Mountains, fam. I'm going to climb to the tippy top. Hey, guys, you see them weird looking people over there with the hairy faces? OMG, what? We got to check them out. So they crossed the mountains into Europe. Yep. My maternal ancestors were the first homo sapiens to go to Europe after the Ice Age, where they met Neanderthals. Neanderthals! We beat up the Neanderthals, but not before having their babies, because Southern Europe is so romantical. Oh my god. Which explains my Neanderthal DNA. Weird. But wait, I'm not finished. Apparently we were too hot. Let's go up there and be British. Anybody got a boat? OK, so your maternal ancestors are British? No. So they migrated north again and? There isn't much north left. Ended up in Finland where they followed the reindeer and knit sweaters and sang songs around the fire and ice. You're Finnish? Yep, all done. OK, so your mitochondrial DNA isn't very African. And that's why you can't take the African DNA test. Well, how does it feel? Like, did any of this change the way you see yourself? It did make me feel better about hating hot weather. Right. And I learned a lot of interesting things, like how expansive the Bantu migration through Africa was. Oh, and how Akka pygmy men spend the most time caring for their infants than any other men in the whole world. OK, they got Tinder out there, because they sound like husband material. I know, right? And the Sami tribe were the indigenous people of Finland. Their traditional homes look a lot like teepees. And here's my sister. See the resemblance? Those cheeks. Genetics don't have much to do with identity. Like, I know my ethnic ancestry for the most part. I'm from Kenya. My people are Kikuyu. But culturally, I'm Black American. True. So would you ever take a DNA test, Ev? I mean, actually, yeah. Because even though I know my ethnic ancestry, I don't actually know my ancestors, the people. After my grandparents, it's kind of a blank for me. And if you took the test, you could find your cousins. Like my favorite internet cousin might be my real cousin. Yeah, sure, but I was thinking more like my family tree. DNA testing can help you with your genealogical research. So what about you? Would you take an ancestry test? Why or why not? And if you have, did you find anything surprising? Did it change the way you see yourself? Let us know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.